Hi guys, Cinematic Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain an Australian science fiction and thriller movie, called On Fini. In the early 23rd century, 95% of the world's population lives below the poverty line. Because of this, many people take on dangerous jobs, such as interplanetary mining, military, and space exploration. At this time, off-Earth transit is achieved via slipstreaming, which is the process of turning matter into a data signal and transmitting it to known coordinates in the universe. The process uses a device called Apex, which is fused into humans' central nervous system. On the other hand, slipstreaming is still a controversy because of the high potential for data corruption. Elsewhere, several soldiers are interrogated in a glass room after serving on a mission. They are asked basic questions about themselves. Instead of answering the questions, they are acting weird for some reason. Some of them are silent, confused, agitated, and furious. Back in the present, new member of West Coast SAR, Whit Carmichael, is both nervous and anxious as this is his first day of slipstreaming. Before leaving for work that day, his wife tells him to do whatever it takes to return safely while giving him a photo with romantic writing on the back as his lucky charm. At West Coast HQ, Whit is warmly welcomed by his captain, Sefton, and his friends. When the other members have left the room, the captain confronts one of the team members, David, about his illegal slipstreaming. As a captain and a close friend, Sefton does not punish him right away, but he wants to hear David's defense first after completing his day's duties. Meanwhile, an emergency is declared on a mining station called OI Anfini, and a SAR team is sent in using slipstream, but they return in a berserk rage 30 seconds later. As a result, the West Coast HQ is forced to activate a lethal lockdown to contain the crisis. Since they are locked in the HQ, Sefton immediately orders David to modify their apex so they can illegally teleport to Anfini. Unfortunately, only Wit and David can teleport there, while Sefton is left behind and ends up dying in the room after David fails to decode his apex. Less than a relative hour later, East Coast SAR is notified of the outbreak and the destruction of the West Coast SAR. It is revealed that the SAR team had previously been tasked with recovering a deranged survivor, Montali, who used to be a worker at the Anfini mining station, but something bad happened there, causing the SAR team to return in a berserk rage. Furthermore, they are informed that a payload of something from the Anfini station has been programmed by Montali to teleport soon to Earth, which will destroy the planet. He has also crippled his Apex device to remain on the facility. Because of this, a team consisting of Charlie, Chester, Morgan, Rex, Claire, Philippa, Harris, and Seed as the captain, is ordered to halt the payload and recover Wit, the only surviving member of the West Coast SAR. However, the location of Anfini is proximal to a number of black holes, meaning the SAR team will experience severe time dilation. Once there, the team finds a frozen slaughterhouse, where all the liquid appears to be frozen. After Seat divides the team into three groups, they immediately start looking for Wit as well as the generator to power the electricity. All of them come across dead bodies of workers in almost every room. When Chester turns on the generator, Seat, who is in the control room, receives several messages from the computer asking their identities, including what their mission is. After the captain explains their objectives, a metal door suddenly opens while the heater turns on by itself, causing the previously frozen ice and blood to melt instantly. Apparently, Wit comes from behind the metal door, and they finally reunite with him. Afterwards, Wit informs them that a mysterious outbreak happened when he arrived at the station one week ago. The cause is still unknown, but what he does know is whenever the mining staff touched each other, either skin to skin or blood, they were clawing at their skin like it was burned in acid. He also saw them all slaughtering and killing each other. He then explains that he managed to hit inside a ducting vent and eventually found the furnace room. After several hours of confinement, he decided to blow up some external vents, killing everyone in the station. The SAR team promises they will take him home, but after he takes the payload permanently offline. Although annoyed at wanting to go home as soon as possible, Wit finally helps them as he has figured out how the station operates. Harris, Morgan, and Claire are ordered to go to the bottom part of the station while getting ready for manual control if needed. While Wit is working on the payload, Chester suddenly approaches him, asking if he was infected or not. Hence, an enraged Wit shows his eyes to let him know that he is fine and uninfected. Long story short, Wit is able to shut down the payload, but suddenly Motley comes out of nowhere in a tax seat. Rex manages to shoot Motley in the head, but everyone in the room is sprayed with his blood, except for Harris. Fortunately, Wit is able to control himself despite being sprayed with Motley's blood, 
while the rest become violently enraged about it. After warning Harris to hide from the others, Wood immediately flees the room, but has to fall while jumping across the corridor. Surprisingly, he is still alive and finally wakes up after hearing someone keep calling his name. It turns out that Charlie keeps looking for him, thinking that Wood has set them up. Therefore, Wood keeps running away until he finds a dead end. Luckily, Morgan suddenly appears and quickly kills Charlie, mistaking him for Wit. Wit then searches the station for the remaining SAR personnel and anything he can learn about the infection. With his consciousness slowly fading, he finally finds a lab, where he discovers a medical log that reveals the planet is entirely composed of alien organic material which when thawed forms a so-called primordial ooze. It is capable of infecting, mimicking, and eventually dominating any biological tissue. Upon further researching his infected blood, he also discovers that the ooze is aggressive, predatory in nature, and driven by self-preservation. After a while, Harris who hides in a locker, suddenly attacks Wit from behind while forcing him to put his gun. Wit explains everything that happened earlier, starting from all the infected members, Morgan who has killed Charlie, and also about the primordial ooze. After learning that the alien material has abilities beyond humans, they realize that there is no way to stop it, other than returning to Earth and shutting down the Onfini station forever. Since Seat was dead, their hope is in Chester who can dial in an early slipstreaming. When the two see the station plan, they are both suddenly attacked by an infected Rex who quickly incapacitates Harris while threatening to kill him. With the help of Wit's words, Rex tries to fight his murderous urge by recalling about Harris and his friends. After he is conscious for a short time, he decides to kill himself before going deranged again. Unluckily, Harris is sprayed by his blood, causing him to be furious as well. Hence, Wit ends up killing him before he can cause any more trouble. Soon, Wit finally finds Chester at the control room, where Chester sends a message to his family using radio transmission even though it takes centuries to reach Earth. Apparently, Chester can also control himself longer after killing Philippa. Wit then asks him to go to Med Bay to find Claire, hoping she can do whatever it takes to prolong their lives before the infection worsens. However, Chester refuses, and the two of them act strangely, talking while bickering continuously until Wit realizes that he has to keep his promise to his wife, so he decides to go alone to find Claire. Meanwhile, Claire is having a blood transfusion at the med bay while watching her body start to mutate. Not long after, her lover, Morgan, comes to her because he promised to protect Claire and their child. It turns out that Claire is pregnant, but unfortunately, she has to get rid of the fetus after finding out that she is infected. Therefore, Morgan is really disappointed in her, so a fight breaks out between the two. At the same time, Wit breaks into the med bay with Chester and finds Morgan dead while Claire is dying. Claire tells him that there is no other way to cure the infection before she finally dies. Respecting Claire's decision, Chester points a gun at Wit's head, but he immediately fights back. A fight ensues between them, and Wit eventually wins the fight by breaking Chester's neck. This leaves Wit the last surviving human on the station. Convinced that the ooze can hear what he says, Wit records a message to it which plays on a loop over the loudspeakers, criticizing it for harnessing only the violent instincts of humanity, instead of working with humans. He also tells the ooze that it has failed and eventually commits suicide just before he loses consciousness. After that, the ooze is seen moving on to the dead bodies. A few moments later, everyone in Anfini awaken unharmed and no longer crazed, as if brought back to life by something. However, they are clearly disturbed by what has happened, so their captain tells them to keep their story simple, which they agree to. As they begin to teleport back to Earth, Wit sees several humanoid forms made of ooze, silently watching them leave. Besides that, one of them holds the picture of Wit's wife that he carried with him before his mission. Back on Earth, all of them are scanned and asked if they are free from biological contaminants. They answer in the affirmative, and the scan ends up clearing them all. In the end, Wit returns home normally to his wife, who had been told that he was not coming back. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.